Hello, welcome to today's episode of Juice in the Numbers. I am your host, Joshua Tracing. And I am Corbin Heller. And we're coming at you on uh, Friday, November 8th, around 6 o'clock. So we won't be talking about this current week in the NFL as the games have not happened. Uh, outside of the Chargers again losing. Um, again to the Raiders. <sighs> I want to talk about for just one second because i'm so confused about what on earth happened to the chargers um because i had picked them to maybe win the afc west um on the back of a great 12 and 4 season you know they only came in second off of like tiebreakers and shit and now here they are what are, have they won four games are they four and five or are they three and six uh man i gotta look it up because they don't um, think they've won four well. games yet I think they only have three. Uh, AFC West, four and six. There you go. I I'm I don't get it. <laughs> Do you? Um, I was reading into it last night because I was curious about this exact thing. Uh, apparently, their offensive line is just destroyed right now. Um, you know, Russell Okung has been the big storyline, but guys like Forrest Lamb. Uh, Dan Feeney, I think it is. Um, they're just really beat up. Rivers is just not gelling well with Keenan Allen. And I don't know what's going on with their running backs, but they both seem to be hot. So I, that's what I read about. I can't say that I've seen enough of them to really know that anything other than Philip Rivers going bananas is wrong. Uh, I wanted to just re- read this a little bit. Um Points for they've so far this season they've outscored scored their opponents they've scored two hundred and seven they have let up one hundred ninety four they've uh, out yarded I don't know their opponents um, by about four hundred yards um, their yards per play is higher than their average opponents they have um, oh they've lost more turnovers than they have their opponents they've um, given up the ball sixteen times to their opponents ten. Uh, they have more first down than their uh, 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 than their cumulative opponents. More completions, more attempts, more yards. Um, uh, for passing, I should I should say all that's for passing. Uh, for rushing, uh, not as great. Their their opponents are out rushing them by about three hundred uh, two hundred fifty yards. But that's not a huge deal, I don't think. Um, they have fewer penalties, four fewer yards than their opponents. Um, and they have more first downs by penalty than their opponents. By all by all accounts, the offense actually looks pretty decent here. Their average time yeah, of drive sounds... is longer than their opponents. Their average number of plays per drive is longer than their opponents. Their average number of yards per drive is more than their opponents. And their average number of points per drive is more than their opponents. So uh, offense and defense, I would assume, are both okay. Since the defense seems to be keeping them in the game and the offense is doing better than their opponent is, and yet here we are. It's fucking weird, right? Yeah. I mean, honestly, when I think about the Chargers in my head, they don't seem like a very good team. But as you read that out to me, it's like, holy shit, like the Chargers are actually, you know, by all means, a good team. What's going on with them? Here's something interesting. They've only lost by more than one score twice this season. That's got to be it. It's got to be like the equivalent of like losing all of your baseball games like two to one, you know? Yeah. Where it could have swung the either. So like their first game, um, they won 30-24 against the Colts. And they lost to the Lions 10 to 13. So one single field goal. Then they lost to the Texans 20 to 27. So one touchdown. They beat the Dolphins, uh, thirty to ten. Then they lost to the Bron. They lost to the Broncos, uh, thirteen to twenty. So again, one score. Lost to the Steelers, seventeen to twenty-four. Again, one score. They lost to the Titans, twenty twenty-three. One score. They lost. They beat. They beat the Bears, seventeen sixteen. They, oh, they beat the Packers. Oh, I misread that. They beat the Packers, twenty-six eleven, and then they lost to the Raiders, twenty-four to twenty-six. So actually, they only lost by. Have we have they lost by more than one score? Oh no, they haven't. All of their all of their losses. I looked at two wins. I thought they were losses. All of their losses are within within one score. And here's uh, that's three points. I want to see how many cumulative points they've lost by. 10, uh, 17, 
20 wait what 24 <laughs> 27 29 if all all five of their losses combined for 29 points uh uh differential that's pre- pretty fucking close all six of their losses i should say that's insane like i don't even know how to describe how a points. team could do that that's ridiculous jesus I'm, I'm this, Ooh, this isn't, this is just a fascinating season that they're having here. This is an interest. Did you realize Tyrod, did you know Tyrod Taylor was on this team? Tyrod? Yes, I did. I All didn't because, know that. Uh, preseason stuff that they did with, uh, the saints. They did like a quarterback competition between the two and he was obviously there competing. So that's the only reason I knew that. Give me what you, uh, some, some stats of like what you think. Philip Rivers has been doing so far this season. Interceptions. Uh, whatever you want. Uh, main stats. Pick, pick, pick. Whatever you want to give me. Like, like what, what, what your perception of of his stats is? Oh, I think that he's has plenty of volume, but he has been committing a lot of turnovers. Um, yeah, I don't know. A lot of you know, fifty fifty balls deep to Mike Williams. Um, so Philip Rivers does have a decent amount of volume. He has 240 completions, um, 65.9 completion percent, which is pretty good. He already has 2,816 yards. So he's so fucking much yards. Um, interceptions. He has 10, which is a decent amount. Um, hard to really justify that one for, you know, Actually, man, he's already played 10 games, so yeah. 16 Offensive interceptions 16. is bad, but it's not awful. No, it's it really isn't. It's obviously not great, but one per game, you should still be fair well in the game. Um, he's averaging 7.3 yards, or sorry, um, 7.7 yards per attempt, 11.7 yards per completion, 281.6 yards per game, uh, 90.6 QB rating. Um, he's he's he looks pretty good here. I want to see if he has any fumbles. Twenty one um, sacks is a lot. Twenty one sacks is a lot. Yeah, for a hundred twenty two yards, that's is, that's uh, a lot. Yeah, so that that d- definitely feeds right into the O line thing that you were saying. Um, it's not even close to his highest sack percentage, though. It's just because he's already has so many attempts. Jeez. Yeah, uh, I, I don't really, I don't see any fum. Oh no, he has five fumbles. Jesus. Oh, Phil, my God. So he's averaging an interception and half a fumble every game. Basically, yeah. So every every two games, you get two interceptions and a fumble. That's rough. Wow. Okay. Uh. So what's the solution for the charters moving forward? Is it, it sounds like it's just, I guess, I guess still O-line because fumbles on the quarterback are usually O-line problems, right? Yeah. I mean, we just looked at them getting pressure a lot and all that. Um, They have to figure out how that O-line is going to work, whether Russell Kung is going to come back. Um, They have to figure out their guard situation. Like their interior is a mess right now. They got to either look at that heavily in free agency if they're going to stick with Philip Rivers for the next couple of years, or they just got to invest into a full rebuild. I don't want them to, to rebuild. I want them to be, I, I don't know. I like the Chargers. I want them to be competitive forever. I agree. And I've, I, I have no Phil, reason. I think Phil to needs a ring before he retires. Oh, I hope he gets one. I really like, do. If it comes down to it and it has to be with a team other than the Chargers, I don't think I would be as upset about it as I should be just because their ownership is so fucking shitty. It's like oh, you're you, happy you, Phil you, got it, but I don't hate you that. You don't it's like Dean with, Spanos? I don't. You, you, oh, that's so surprising. He's so well loved. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Everyone likes Dean <laughs> He's uh. the best. 
This podcast brought to you by Dean Spanos. <laughs> you had me going for a second, and I was concerned for the uh, future of this podcast. Oh, I'm a huge Dean Spanos fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm. No one is. I don't. I can't imagine anyone in his, in his life is. <laughs> his, his kids probably hate him too. He's quietly sucked. resenting him. Fuck that guy. Ah, um. So what do you want to get into next? So the Silver Sluggers got announced. Uh, I'll say last week since this episode will release on Monday. Uh, and I uh, figured we could talk about the the winners very briefly, if back. we may. All right. Do you want to start with the AL or the NL? Um, doesn't matter. All right. Are we'll you looking at the, the pro or pro baseball reference page? Um, uh, I have a baseball reference email, but I also pulled up all of the um winners individual pages as well all right fair enough so we can we can look at them uh mitch garver won for catcher he his uh slash line in 2019 273 365 630 for a 995 ops good for a 156 ops plus i feel like this was a it, this is a is, is usually a pretty given category for like any two or three catchers in a given year you know um there's not a lot of great offensive catchers so whenever if if you notice a guy at playing catcher batting well he he probably is one of the only ones doing it um you know there's this mm-hmm. there's not a lot of good ones so mitch garver had a hell of a season totally deserved this um he has five career war and four of them came from this year. So he was hurt for a little bit. Uh, and I'm glad that didn't factor into this too much because he had a very spectacular season. So that's Mitch Garver. Uh, if for first base, we have Carlos Santana of the Cleveland Indians. Woo-hoo. His slash line was 281, 397, 515. Good for a 911 OPS. And a 136 OPS plus played in a hundred. He played in 158 games this year. I didn't realize he played that much. Wow. Talk about durability. Yo, he I hasn't played. Him, but... He hasn't played fewer than 150 games since 2013. Damn. He yeah. Is Iron Man. He, and that's one of his only, if you, if you discount his rookie season in which he played 46 games, uh, 2011, you played 155, then 143, 154, 152, 154, 158, 154, 161, 158. Dude is constant. That's really, I like, I've watched him play for the Indians for like three, four years now. Um, I can't say that's ever something I've noticed, you know, how much he actually is in every single game. Damn. Yeah, it's it's one of those things you don't realize until someone points it out to you. Like I remember last year, um, I didn't realize Giancarlo Stanton had played in all the games he had played in until Judge had gone down, and there was like, I want to say we were in June, maybe July at this point, and a broadcast was like, "Oh, Giancarlo Stanton's played in every game this season," and we're like, we're like ninety games into the year, and I'm like, he's played in every game this season. How have I not noticed that? And you just you just kind of don't, you know. Yeah, I feel you. I honestly, I never would have noticed if you did not just point this out to me. I I want him to. How old do you think he is? Thirty-two. That sounds right. Where are? Open his page. Thirty-three. Thirty-three. Yeah. yeah. About to turn. Well, not about to turn. We'll turn thirty-four by uh next season. By spring training, yeah, or at least yeah, at least by the when the the season. Uh, a little bit into the season on April eighth. Good for him. Way to go, Carlos. Hall of yeah. very good. I'm honestly I'm surprised he only has one all star. But Yeah, that's fucking yeah. weird. And you this know he it. got it this year because it was in Cleveland. Yeah. And honestly, there have been past years where I think he's deserved it and had better numbers than this. But, you know, he's uh he's just that way, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I guess, granted, this is the highest OPS plus season of his career. The only 
season there is one season close to it his 2013 campaign uh where he didn't get an all-star nod but also finished 15th in mvp voting which is weird um and then he followed that up in 2014 so now he's like a name you know like he had a good season people knew it he got some mvp voting um and then 2014 he led all of baseball with 113 walks and like still had a very nice year at the play 122 ops plus and still didn't get an all-star nod like that feels yeah he definitely should have at some point given how much of it is just like a you're in once you're usually in kind of deal Mm -hmm. fucking who knows man i looked i looked it up uh the year he got mvp votes he was 15th with three vote points the winner miguel cabrera had 385 did he win the uh, triple crown that year uh i think so So that feels like the triple crown year what year was that 2013 2013 yeah that was his uh, mvp year well his second consecutive mvp year uh some some may say he's uh pretty fucking good at baseball (laughs) uh 2013 he led it was not the triple crown no it was uh the year before yeah 2012 was the triple crown year yeah triple crown for anyone unaware is as a hitter when you lead in batting average home runs and rbis so in 2012 miguel cabrera led the american league in batting average at 330 and then he led all of baseball in home runs and rbis he had 44 home runs and 139 rbis and as you can see, Corwin, his base reference page is littered with black ink. Um, <laughs> he's such an easy Hall of Famer. Yeah, I can't wait. Actually, can't no, I take that him. back. I can wait. I want him to stay in baseball. Uh, I'm so conflicted because on the one hand, it's getting sad. But on the other hand, like I never want old. You know how much I love, love old man baseball. It's not like um, he had a terrible season. No, uh, Yeah, zero wins above replacement means that he was right there. <laughs> He was uh All right, fair enough. He was around. He batted uh two eighty two uh with forty one runs, fifty nine RBI, and twelve home runs. So you it's not a- exactly a power first baseman that you uh want on a championship team, but he's alive. Uh, yeah, uh better than his uh twenty eighteen campaign in which he yeah. uh played thirty eight games and hit three home runs. <laughs> God. Uh, I had him on my fantasy team that year. What a dramatic drop from 2017, though, where he batted 249, 329, 330, 399, 728 OPS, a 90, only a 93 OPS plus, but um, just a just a big old drop off from from there. And then the year before that, he was a uh, top 10 MVP voting, All Star, Silver Slugger, and it's been a it's been a big old fall. Did he uh, get eight? in 2016? Yeah, no, 2016, no, 2018, he did. Yeah, I remember that. It was like a, a bicep thing. Pack thing. Yes. I want to say torn bicep sounds right. Something weird. Damn. Baseball home to weird injuries. Right, Age catches all of them, my friend. Age catches oh. them all. Oh, yes. What all is right. up next on the docket? Second base. A no surprise here. DJ LeMayhew. Uh, his final slash line for the 2019 season. 327, 375, 518, an OPS of 893, an OPS plus of 136. Uh, this is his first Silver Slugger award, which is crazy which is to back as a batting yeah. title. <laughs> that is a fair point. Yeah. Yeah, I wish, that, like, I want to see if I can find who beat him in the. Because in, in 2016, he didn't just win, uh, like, the NL batting title. Um, he had the highest batting average in all of baseball. So I, I want to know who beat him for the silver slugger. Uh, but unfortunately- up to 2016 silver slugger finalists. Finalists. That's the word I should have typed into here as well. Cause all I can find is the winners. Um, and uh, granted, is it a meaningful award? Like, yes and no. It's one of those ones where it's like, you shouldn't be judging too many people off of that, but at the same time, they'll use it for contract negotiations and it'll be brought up for Hall of Fame discussion and like all those kinds of things. But it's much as the um gold glove is handed out by Rawlings, the Daniel Murphy beat him. All right, let's see what Daniel Murphy's season was. Um the Silver Slugger is handed out by Louisville. 
people. So it's again like it's discussed in MLB and it's treated as an MLB award, but it's not given out by the MLB. I don't believe. I believe it is still given out by Louisville. So take that for what you want. All right. Was he was he playing second base uh that year? Or was he yeah, playing he first was. Uh, no, so I guess it base. was Daniel Murphy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because uh 2016 was who was was Trevor Story there yet? Is it the story no, or Tulowitzki? I, so. I think it was Tulowitzki. 2016, though. I think no, I think it was Trevor Story. Because I think was I think Tulo left in 2014. Year? No, was it really? Yeah, dude, it was a while ago now. Man, don't make me feel old. I haven't been into baseball that long. 2016 was his rookie year. Played 97 games. There, there you go, Josh. Uh, so, so uh, Daniel Murphy beat out. Oh, he had a really nice season, though. He had he led the league in doubles. He had five triples, 25 home runs. He led the league in slugging. Led the league in OPS. Second place in MVP voting. Fuck, this is a good fucking year. Ah, oh, damn. For who? For Daniel Murphy, the year that he oh, beat gotcha. DJ for Silver Slugger. I was looking into uh, Troy Tulowitzki still, and he got traded a uh, good way into that 2015 season. Nah, all right. But yeah, DJ seems like a, like, like an yeah. obvious, uh, or I don't know, obvious, a good choice for the Silver Slugger award. Um, he did not finish top three in, in MVP voting, as we now know. That's going to be between Bregman, Trout, and Marcus Simeon, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, which I'm conflicted I didn't, about. I didn't see that. Like, I didn't see that being a thing. Yeah, yeah. It got announced yesterday, I believe. Anyway, I'm conflicted about the Marcus Simeon top three selection. I don't really care that DJ is not going to uh, be in the top three. I don't think anyone outside of like a small select group of Yankees fans thought he was going to finish in the top three. Um, Cause why should he <laughs> like, what has he done? Um, yeah. I get, he hits a lot of baseballs, but that doesn't, that's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand though, I'm just not sure I give a shit about Marcus Simeon's season. <laughs> like it was a good year. But I oddly agree. He and he has a uh, high war, but in part because he has very good defense, and so he gets a a, a plus, you know, defense stat. But my thing is with like D war is it can be useful, like big picture, but it's not super reliable. Like no defensive stats are really super reliable, and it feels like because the voter pool is getting younger, they're just gonna like pick the top three based on war, and I mean. He's not bad. He's a really, he's a, he had a really good season. Mm-hmm. Top five, sure. Top three, uh, I don't know. Eh. Uh, eh. Uh. Uh. I'm with you. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. What's up? What's up next? Hold on, real quick. I just want to see who did finish top five, top 10 in war position players. Um, after Simeon, Simeon was number three in the American League. After that, it was Betts, Chapman, uh, and those are the only other two I see. Ah, uh, yeah, I would have rather Matt Chapman, but whatever. I absolutely agree, but I am a total fanboy, and I'll admit it. Which brings us to one of the men who did finish in the top three for MVP voting, Alex Bregman. He won a Silver Slugger for third base. Um. His slash line was 296, 423, 592, a 1015 OPS and a 162 OPS plus. Um, the highest mark of his career, building upon an already very impressive 2018 campaign. Um, last season, he finished top, f- he finished number, he finished fifth in MVP voting this year. He will certainly be finishing higher. Uh, what a great year! What a great year. Yeah, I'm starting to think this uh, kid is definitely going to be a good player. Go Jews. <laughs> um, yeah, I think he definitely would have been in the running for uh, World Series MVP if uh, if they were able to pull that out. He had a great postseason, uh, even though it may not have looked it. I think he will be happy with it. 
And I'm excited for Alex Bregman in the future. And I'm willing to point him out. Yeah, I... Hold on one second. What year is he in his contract? Fourth year? He's uh, he's about to get fucking paid in arbitration. Oh, hell yeah. Dude, the Astros are about to become like like what the Red Sox are. Really good, but like, oh my god, that payroll is so unsettling. Uh, Anyway, let's jump on over to shortstops, which actually is a Red Sox. Xander Bogarts won for shortstops. He had a batting line of 309, 384, 555, a 939 OPS for a 140 OPS plus. Also a high watermark for his career. Um, a great season. One of the most fun seasons if you're a fan because he has like a really high batting average. So you get to say, oh, he has a high batting average. But he also had a really high on base percentage because so he was walking a lot. Um, and he had a high slugging percent so when he was hitting he was crushing and like those are those are just uh, seeing a nice like 300 400 500 season even though he did <laughs> touch 400 for the obp like it's it is really valuable um but it's also just such a fun way to watch baseball oh 100 percent. even if it is the red Sox. <laughs> what do you think uh is i mean is he there for the foreseeable future in Boston with the talks of uh, Mookie Betts being traded and whatnot? Oh, for sure. Um, he signed a relatively team-friendly contract just last season. So I just found I, it here. Signed through 2025, uh, 12 million a year. That's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. He was a guy that they really wanted to keep on I'm the sorry, team. 20. $20 million a year? 20 million a year so this final season is 12 million and then it was a six-year extension for 120 oh i thought it was 12 all the way through okay hmm i still say they keep him because i don't know who else they they put up in that spot and i mean it's not like they have any prospects yeah they they don't also what team are you going to trade him to you know? Uh certainly not the Pirates, certainly not the Indians, so no idea. Yeah. Um the Astros don't need him. The Yankees just didn't even re-sign Didi Gregorius, so they don't need him right now. At least they they don't think that they do. The Angels don't I'm trying to think of teams that are gonna try to compete. The clearly the A's don't need him since Marcus Simeon's just about to finish <laughs> top three in MVP voting. Um fucking the Rays can't afford him. Uh, like who? Who? Yeah, who are they? Who are they going to? At, at such an important position. What if? Uh, what if the Angels decide to move on from Andrelton Simmons uh, due to age they or won't. whatever it is? They won't. Um, no. All right. Fair enough. It's it it. They're so bad, Corbin. They're so bad. They need to hang I on want to them every to be good. mediocre player that they have. No, I'm saying like like no. like even No, I get what you mean. Yeah, because going from 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 Dre to or going from Simba to to Bogarts, mm-hmm. it would be a step up for sure. But they just have so many other positions of need. Like they really need to get their shit figured out at I don't even know who plays third base for them right now. Their outfield's a fucking uh, mess outside of Trout. Yeah. Um Pujols is still there, even though I love the fact he's still there. Yeah, I'm sure the Angels fans don't love the fact he's still there. Their pitching's a nightmare. Um, catcher for them's actually been pretty okay. Like they have so many problems. Yikes. Um Matt Theis or David <laughs> Fletcher. I have no idea who the first person you just said is. I've heard yeah. of David Fletcher. <laughs> I honestly thought it would be David Fletcher, but Matt Theis is listed higher than him on the official Angels depth chart right now. Um, man, first base and third base for them is not great. No, their no, outfield's gonna be fine with the amount of prospects they have, but the corner's not looking good. Nor is, is uh, whoever the fuck is gonna tow the slab over there in uh in Anaheim, and oh, man, they have so many fucking problems. Yeah, let's let's move on from that. <laughs> the winner for uh right field was. Boston's Mookie Betts. 
He this is oh, his uh third win in four years. That's that just spit into the mic a bunch. Uh, his slash line was 295, 391, 524, a 915 OPS, a 135 OPS plus, and as crazy as this sounds, a dramatic fall from what he did last season. Um since last year had a 186 OPS plus and led the league in sorry, led all of baseball in both slugging and batting average and run scored, which he did again in this season with the run scored. Uh great season by a very great hitter. Um, which just goes to show how fucking stupendous his 2018 season was. Yeah. But uh yeah, solid choice. Solid uh an uncontestable choice in right field. So is this the right time to say where does Mookie Best play next year? Ooh, I haven't thought about this at all. Let's find out. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Do you have I, any? Do you have any? No uh, clue. I'm no? gonna go to the Vegas betting odds and see what they have to say because they are much smarter than I am. All right. Well, let's look at who finished well last. Year. So Tampa's out. The Yankees are out. The whole the AL East is out. Um, the twins could always use more hitting, but they, as we just discussed a few weeks ago, have two pitchers on their starting rotation going into next season. So they need to prioritize that. Um, the Indians are starting to tighten the purse strings a little bit as their, I guess their perception of their contention window is closing. So I don't know about that. The A's, um, that would be interesting if they weren't broke as fuck. <laughs> uh, that would actually be kind of cool to see him on the A's. The the Rangers, do they have money? I don't think so. I don't actually know. Obviously, pitching is more of a problem for them, too, but uh, I'm not even going to look it up. It doesn't matter. Uh, yo, how great would it be to see a trade to the Padres? I would be all for it, but I think outfield is like the last of their needs right now. Uh, I, I mean, they do need more pitching. Their pitching isn't bad. It's not awful, no. Chris, they got Paddock, year, Chris Paddock, they got Strom. Another year, Joey Lucchese. Garrett Richards is yeah. finally going to be healthy because he was spent all last year on IL, which, or I, yeah, I got it right, which um, which sure. they expected. They, they were prepared for that, but, you know, still. Um, Yo, could you imagine him on the Brewers and just him and Yelich just fucking <laughs> smashing bombs out there? That would be tremendous. I don't know. Uh, with what basically you... just Josh Hader eating up 200 innings a year because he has to. I wouldn't I wouldn't mind that either. Yeah. I don't, I genuinely Ooh, you all right, all right. You know it'd be a great pick. I'm not even being sarcastic. You know it would be a great place to send him. Where? The Mets. Uh, do the Mets want him though? Like enough to pay for him? They should. They should look, they're a New York team. They never spend money. They need exactly. offense. They never. No, no, no spend but like this, this would be the opportunity because they've already like when they hired Brody Van Wagenen last year, like he was like, "We're going to go all in." Like we believe in the team we have, and they made a bunch of free agent signings and they made a bunch of trades and like they they made a push. And did it turn out perfect? No, but they did finish ten games over five hundred. Um, they somehow finished with a better record than the Phillies, who spent even more than them. Like, could you, they only finished seven games back of the Nationals. Yeah. So, could you imagine that team plus Mookie Betts? Like, he immediately becomes the best hitter on the team, which is what everyone said about Robinson Cano, but Mookie Betts is a solid seven years younger seven, than Robinson yeah. Cano. Um, For real. Like, they, they they certainly have the money if the Wilpons would just fucking spend it. Like, I, you know that they fucking do. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you add in, like, the slim but present possibility that Yannis Cespedes comes back next season. That outfield becomes... Brandon Nimmo, um, Michael, what's his face? With a C? Uh, yeah, fuck. Jesus you know who I'm Christ. talking about. Yeah, no. 100%. That fucking guy. <laughs> oh, God damn it. He was he had such a great 2017. I can't think of his name. This is killing me. I'm looking it up. Uh, I am Michael too. Conforto. Conforto. Oh, thank Jesus, you. Jesus, fuck. So the we are awful baseball podcasters. By no, we're way. both just bad with names. It's it's so tough. Um, but so anyway, their outfield becomes Brandon Nimmo, Michael Conforto, um, Mookie Betts, and Juana Cespedes. 
Like possibly. Like that's Jeff McNeil, maybe. Uh well rotating in when he has to. Yeah, like, he plays like definitely. every position for them. Yeah. Like, he also played like second and short and third, I think, and probably first uh, at this point. Uh, yeah, I'm sure he's played literally everything. Yeah, he's he's plug and play. But like that that's a fucking mean ass outfield. Like they could win some serious ball games with that outfield. So he played four, five, seven, and nine, Jeff McNeil this year. Four, five, seven. So yeah, he played he played second, third, um, and left and right. There you go. Yeah. The Mets should trade for Mookie Betts. That's what they should start chanting. I looked up an article that the uh, CBS Sports guys did, and they have Red Sox number one, which is boring, and then the Braves, Cardinals, Astros, and Dodgers as the top five. And that's just whatever. Uh, Yeah, I don't think I see it. I definitely don't see the Dodgers. No. No absolutely not yeah anyway um moving on the other outfielder uh to win the silver slugger award was uh sorry i guess we have two more left the um other corner outfielder to win it was george springer won silver slugger for this year with a batting average of 292 on base 383 slugging 591 for an ops of 974 and a 150 OPS plus. This is his second Silver Slugger award. That was a lot of S's. Um, <laughs> and yeah, tidy ass season. Uh, no complaints. Zero complaints. Yeah, I don't either. I was thinking when you were saying that, what I was trying to say, and it's like, I, I've got nothing. Springer was the dude. He was hurt, but he was still the dude for the whole season. Yeah, yeah, he is so consistent. Um, I have nothing crave to say. Which brings us to the final uh, Silver Slugger position. Um, Silver Slugger winner in the outfield. Center field. Can you guess, Corwin? Can you guess? I have no idea who this could ever be. (laughs) It's Mike Trout. Mike Trout with his uh, slash line of 291, 438, 645, an OPS of 1083, which crazy enough isn't even a career high. A 185 OPS plus, which also isn't even a career high. That's, that's fucking insane. Um, this is his uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh Silver Slugger award. He only didn't win it one year. Um, 2017. Corbin, can you guys what his OPS was in 2017? Uh, 998. 1071. <laughs> Fuck me up. <laughs> like, can you imagine not giving? He led all of baseball in OPS and OPS. He led all of baseball that year in on base percentage. So, sorry, he led the American League in on base percentage and slugging, and then led and intentional walks, and then led all of baseball in um, OPS and OPS plus, and didn't win Silver Slugger. It's batshit crazy how good he is. So I saw something today. His career uh, OPS rounded to three digits is exactly a thousand. Uh, yeah, I saw the same thing, and indeed it is. He is uh, he's pretty fucking good at baseball. So I looked up career OPS plus. Um, actually, they sent me to a page that's just career OPS. So we'll just go with it. He currently is eighth all time behind a group called or a group with Babe Ruth, Ted Williams, Lou Gehrig, Barry Bonds, Jimmy Fox, Hank Greenberg, and Rogers Hornsby. That's a pretty good group. Some might say. Um furthermore, Corwin, would you like to know who beat out Mike Trout for Silver Slugger in 2017? I do actually. Really bad. I could give you a million guesses. You would never pick this person. No. Are you of ready? Not. Uh, yeah. Justin Upton. Uh, what? Justin Upton, also of the Angels, 273, 361, 540, a 901 OPS, a 137 OPS plus. By all accounts, a very good season. Yeah. A very good season. 
my couch know, was just man. so much better. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck happened there, but whatever. Congrats, Justin Upton. Justin <laughs> Upton, holy fuck. <laughs> Justin Upton, my god. I, I, you know, it, it was definitely a story when it happened for sure, and I'm, I'm willing to bet there were nine thousand pieces written about it when it happened, and I, I forgot. I, I couldn't couldn't have dredged that up if you had asked me to how hilarious oh man all right the final al um silver slugger winner was dh it went to nelson cruz his slash line 311 392 639 a 1031 ops a 166 ops plus um geez, so much fun uh, it, wow this is only his third silver slugger award he's so good yeah yeah he is he was there oh, was well. shown something today had just how much better than the rest of the uh twins he was this year oh he was a monster this year um what was his yeah 4.3 war that, that's, that's a, a pretty good, damn good season for a dh you know so he's not getting anything from anywhere else like that's that's really good a 39 year old dh at that yes excellent addition <laughs> fucking old as shit slow too so he's not getting anything from base running yeah all right, so those are the uh, American League DH uh, DHs, Silver what? Slugger winners. Any any points of contention? Any names you were hoping to see that you didn't? I want you to guess how many stolen bases he had in 2018, Nelson Cruz. 2018 or 2019? 2018. We know he got none in 2019. Oh, I I wouldn't. I didn't know that. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll I'll guess three. Only got one. Not looking great. Oh, he he's doing the whole uh he did the whole uh Albert Pujols thing. <laughs> Just give up running altogether. No, Albert Pujols gets one stolen base every year. But it's not like he's taking opportunities to steal bases. He just he only ever chooses to steal a base when he knows he can get it. I choose to believe that Albert Pujols is very self-aware <laughs> and and knows he only steals one base a year. And so he spends all season hunting for it. <laughs> Just the perfect opportunity. Oh, no, wait. Actually, Albert Pujols stole three bases this past year. You just lied to me, Josh. I didn't realize he stole three. He stole three this year, one last year, three the year before that. Um, Yeah, wow. He actually... He how hasn't many, been... How many stolen bases do you think Albert Pujols has in his career? Um, I unfortunately already saw the number to this. Oh, okay. But if you had to guess before you saw it, it would not be that number. Yeah, I probably would have guessed like 50. Much lower. Yeah. You know, I would like, say like maybe 45. Was probably you know, he's the not highest that no. And he's old. Yeah. Well, and maybe more. You think he's just been around for so long. Well, that's the other thing is like he's. He, so he was a he was a he's been around. But he's been around in an era where stealing bases isn't as common anymore. But he played for the Cardinals, who are a pretty old school team. So eh, it's kind of no like, point. yeah. I mean, granted, his his career watermark is sixteen, which he did twice. But that's not like a lot. But so it's one hundred fourteen. I don't think we said it so far. It's one hundred fourteen stolen bases, which is I don't know more than I expected. So I have a cool stat here for you. Since 2016, Albert Pujols has 11 stolen bases. Okay. And zero caught stealing. Yeah, he hasn't been caught stealing since 2015. It's uh, it's, it's amazing. It's insane. That's the coolest stat ever. Yeah. He's gone four straight seasons without getting caught stealing while still getting, you know, actual stolen bases. Four stolen bases. That's awesome. I love that his rookie year, he stole one base and got caught stealing three times. <laughs> and then next year, they're like, all right, Albert, you got to do better. And so he stole two bases, but got caught stealing four times. <laughs> <laughs> and then 20, 2003, and he then got better. <laughs> five and one. Five and one. Five and one's good. And then the next season, Albert's like, all right, I, I mastered this. And he stole five bases again, but got caught five more times. Um. 2007 he's like he's a vet you know he's done this he's on a new contract he stole only two bases caught stealing six times oh Albert Pujols I love your stat page so much he's so weird and good I love him I love oh, how in 20, 
or I'm sorry, 2005, he had 16 stolen bases and two caught stealing. That's a perfect number. He finished top five in MVP, MVP voting six years straight to start his career with with the, with one win, and still finished top ten that following year. Yeah, and then, and then after one, that, two one two straight. In the first the first year, he didn't finish top ten in MVP voting when he finished seventeenth in twenty twelve, age thirty two season, his first year in Los Angeles. If he retired after the 2007 season, he would be a fringe Hall of Fame candidate in my mind, just because of how high he was for his entire career leading up to his retirement. And then he goes and wins two back-to-back MVPs. It's just so fucking good. Just so f- over 100 wins by replacement. Just will so forever be the guy that I am upset most that I missed out on his peak. Yeah. I only got to see the end. Same. All right, shall we go to the National League? Sure thing. All right, to kick things off, we have the uh, the pitcher award winner who no longer is in the National League, <laughs> Zach Granke, won only his second Silver Slugger. Um, he finished with, with a slash line. Let me just find let me find Zach Granke's standard batting page. Um, we finished Very with awkward. a 2019 slash line of 280, 308, 580. Good for an 888 OPS and a 122 OPS plus. That's a guy who, while winning a gold glove, could be an all-star as like a position player. Zach Greinke hit a triple this year. (laughs) All right. This has nothing to do with Zach Greinke, but this is a wild stat about pitcher home runs. Uh, Felix Hernandez is the only uh, American League pitcher. I'm sorry. He's the only guy to hit a grand slam as a pitcher. That can't be true. Ah, that's it's something that had to do with that. Ooh, I think he's the only pitcher to hit a grand slam off of another. No, you have to hit. You have to hit a grand slam off another pitcher. <laughs> well, no, I mean, no. technically, you technically you don't. I think I know the stat, the 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 weird fact you're talking about, but. Because I know I'm pretty sure Don Larson of the Yankees has a, has as a grand slam. I think it was an inside oh, the man. park grand slam. Was it for 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 Don Larson? Felix, oh. I saw Felix had an opposite field home run against the Mets in in City Field, or was it Shea at that point? No, I'm so ups- I am so upset that I am forgetting this. Um, I forgive you. Yeah, whatever. Now the- our listeners will never know. And that's okay. I'm okay with this point every now and then. JT Real Muto for catcher won the Silver Slugger this year. He, <laughs> um, he spent all of his time in the National League. He I, uh, finished with a slash line of 275, 328, 493, an OPS of 820, an OPS plus of 108, which feels rather low. Corwin, what do you have to say? Uh, I have to say that I found that stat. <laughs> what was it? Felix Hernandez is the only American League pitcher to hit a grand slam since the DH rule was introduced. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. We were close. We were so close. It was right there. (laughs) So continue. A 108 OPS plus feels pretty shy uh, or pretty light in winning Silver Slugger, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, I guess so. But what was, uh, you know, what was the rest of the field like? That's what I'm trying to find. Like, was there nobody ahead of him there? At 108, I have. I feel like there has to have been a singular catcher with a better OPS plus than that. Like, what was uh, what was Wilson Contreras's? He was an All Star this year. I'm trying to look up. Catcher OPS plus, which is being ridiculous. Um, but Google just gave me mad shit for spelling Wilson Contreras with one L because apparently that man has two L's in it. Oh, well, I don't think he's listening to this amazing podcast. His OPS was 125, Wilson Contreras. His OPS plus? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, why wouldn't he? Why would? Why didn't he win? I have no idea. What was Gary Sanchez? Uh, well, Gary Sanchez is, is American League, so it doesn't. 
and I'm stupid. Never yeah, mind. That's okay. Uh, that I don't know. I don't like that. I, why did he win? I have no idea. I think I think this might be a a, a vaunted case of winning because you've won it before. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't put it past anyone. He did just win last year, and the Phillies don't have a lot to root for right now. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with that. That's my that's my declaration. All right, I'll accept it. Uh, all right, first base. The winner was Freddie Freeman. This is his first Silver Slugger award, um, which seems weird since he has a top five finish and MVP, two top five MVP, MVP finishes, um, and a and a number six finish. So it's not like he's new to being rather good. Uh, mm-hmm. He finishes the is this season with a two ninety five three eighty nine five forty nine slash line a 938 OPS good for a 136 OPS plus actually on the decline here uh he's a, he has had a lower OPS plus every season since 2016 that's okay odd very odd yeah what's funny is that these last two seasons which are like the lowest it's been in the last 4 years he's been an all-star both years how strange very but uh you know that's a that's a good year in my book uh Oh yeah, by all means, it's a fantastic year. Um, it's just you know one of those things. Baseball's got its quirks. Yeah, it, it doesn't. Does. It doesn't feel like he's been in. He's played a decade in the league. I know. I that keeps fuck, especially because he looks young. But yeah, he looks like he could be twenty five, twenty six. Yeah, but he's uh, he's been fucking he's been fucking doing it for a while now. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah, I I I keep feeling like he's like. Still in arbitration or some man. shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, it feels weird. I don't know. He already has. Uh, never mind. Who's up next? Up next, we have Ozzy Albies, winning for his second base. He finishes with a slash line of 295, 352, 500, an OPS of 852, an OPS plus of 114. Which, uh, not a bad year. Getting Silver Slugger with know. that. Uh, wasn't even an all star. Yeah, I, that's what I'm finding so so hilarious about this is uh, where where there's, there's such a disconnect, you mm-hmm. know. Like I feel like he wasn't doing very good at the All Star break. Like it was wasn't a snub. Like it was a genuine. Eh, Ozzy Al- Albies should not be the second base All Star. I don't know. Yeah, my yeah, memory I, is uh... not that good. Oh God, whose is? <laughs> Uh, third base, Anthony Rendon. Not a surprise in the slightest. This is his second time winning the award. His slash line to end the season, 319, 412, 598, a 10-10 OPS, a 153 OPS+. plus. The man is good at baseball. Uh, zero complaints. Just so good. He deserves more Silver Sluggers. Yeah, weird. He. Uh, this is only his second. Um, <laughs> because it bookends four straight years of Nolan Arenado winning. Oh, oh that's right. Third base is so fucking stacked. Mm-hmm. Where do you think he goes? I think he stays with the Nats. Yeah, it, you know, ever since we looked at their 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 payroll in that one episode we did, mm-hmm. where it's only like a hundred and ten, like they should just resign Rendon and Str- Strasburg. They have the money. I really they hope give they each do. of those dudes thirty million dollars, and there's payroll next season would still only be a hundred and seventy million dollars, which like isn't bad. And they honestly, their team would look extremely similar. Yeah, yeah, I can't think of any other like big time players they'd be losing. Like, fuck it, go for it, dude. I want to look up their free agents. Why not? While you're doing that, I will give you the shortstop who won Silver Slugger this year. Trevor Story wins his second. He finishes this year with a slash line of 294, 363, 554, an OPS of 917, OPS plus of 118. And uh, yeah, sure, man. Mm -hmm. Don't care. (laughs) Honestly, no. Uh, Honestly, do you want to know the Washington Nationals free agents for this year? Uh, Yes, let me know. Uh, Steven Strasburg, Anthony Rendon, Ryan Zimmerman, Brian Dozier, uh, Fernando Rodney, Howie Kendrick, Matt Adams, Jan Gomes, Asujabral, Cabrera, 
Uh, Daniel Hudson, those are really the only big ones to know. I loved hearing you say as Drupal. As as Zuj, as, fuck. I don't even know how I said it now. As Drupal. As Dr- how did I say it? I'm you curious. said ab ab Drupal, some shit like that. <laughs> I just loved when as Dribble Cabrera was on the same team, uh, was on the same Phillies team as Odubel Herrera at the same time. Oh god, um, that was I remember yeah. that year. Yeah, because I remember I was talking to Ethan about it, and he and I told him like, "Oh yeah, the Phillies just traded for as Dribble Cabrera," and he was like, "I thought they already had him," and I was like, "No, they just traded for him." He goes, "But I I know that name," and then we were I I went through the team in my head, and I was thinking, "Oh, you're thinking of Odubel Herrera," and he was like, "Those are different guys," and I was like, "Technically, yes." Um, <laughs> But as Drupal Cabrera and Odubel Herrera were on the same team, and that's just such a fun. Even though Odubel Herrera is like a bad, really, really bad guy who's not in baseball anymore, which he shouldn't be. Um, it's uh, still a super fun name combo. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> moving on. For outfield, our three Silver Slugger winners were starting with Ronald Acuna Jr. Uh, he won with a uh, slash line of 280, 365, 518, and 883 OPS, 122 OPS plus. This is his first Silver Slugger award. Um, for, and uh, yeah, yeah, stole 37 bases. That's a lot of bases. <laughs> do, do, you think, do you think stolen bases should count for Silver Slugger? Um, you didn't slug for the base. No, you didn't really bat for anything. It So do... Stolen bases have uh, their own. They have their own award, right? Like uh, the, the uh, stolen base uh, leader gets an award. I. It's baseball, so like I'm, I'm sure they do. I don't know what it would be though. I don't. I not, not one I could think of off the top the, of my head. The Lou Brock Award. <laughs> Look at you go. Um, I don't know why. Never mind. Don't know why Continue. I didn't call. Um, <laughs> shout, shout out to my to my, my Nora Jones fans. Ah, uh, uh, gang, gang. Um, Cody Bellinger was one of the second of our outfield uh, Silver Slugger Award winners. This is also his first, which also feels weird. He finished the year with a 305, 406, 629 batting line, a one. Uh, sorry, a 1035 OPS, a 169 OPS plus, and a fucking phenomenal year. And it is also a top three MVP award finisher. There you go. Finalist. I think the top three, the, the, the final three for the NL is Bellinger, Yelich, and I want to say Cattell Marte, but that doesn't sound right. No, I don't think that's right. Man, who was that third person? It was like, uh, oh, was it Rendon? Oh, you're right. It was Rendon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, like, it sounds like we just talked about him. Oh, yeah, it was the guy we just talked about. Yeah, you're right. Uh, which brings me to the, the, the last person that we just mentioned, um, the final outfielder to win the Silver Slugger this year, Christian Yelich. This is his third Silver Slugger award. Yes, he actually did win one in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he finishes the year with a 329, 429, 671 bat- batting line, an 1100 OPS, a 179 OPS plus. And for reference, he led the National League in all five of those categories and led all of baseball in slugging and OPS. <laughs> Yikes. He's had a good season. Um, he should I be MVP. I want him to win MVP. So here's the I thing. Everyone's stuff. saying Bellinger's going to win it. I'm biased towards Bellinger because I own him in Dynasty and I love him and whatever. I still think it should be Yelich. I don't know why Bellinger everyone's didn't hopping on board Bellinger. Bit. And he tapered off so much to end the year. Oh, you want me to? I want, I want to read you. I'm going to pull it up. I want to read you um, his his splits by by month, Bellinger. Oh, God. The, it can't the be taper good. is insane. All right. Uh, let's see by month. I'll just go with OPS or is there a, a stat you'd prefer? I was just no, OPS, OPS, OPS is fun. All right. March and April, a 1397 OPS. Kind of good. May 998. Also very good. Very, very good. Yeah. Super high. 
June 967. So still lower, same, still same really spot. good. Uh, July 952, still lower, still really good. August 918, still lower, still really good. September and October 891, it's, it's, it's good. Um, but it dropped. It dropped every single month. Yeah, it wasn't a great trend. And part of me is kind of worried about him for next year. But at the same time, it's Cody Ballinger. So I shouldn't be. Um, but yeah, still think uh, if he wins it, it, he still had a fantastic season. But it kind of should be Yelich. It sh- I mean, he led in all five categories. Like, if you want to look up who led who led the National League in most of the things that count, it, w- it was Christian Yelich. <laughs> it was it was Christian Yelich. He should he should win. I firmly believe this. Um. Anyway, that brings us to the end of the Silver Slugger Awards. There is one thing I'd like to do very quickly, if I may. Absolutely. Um, and that would be snubs. Okay. So I have pulled up just um. Everyone who led, or, or everyone in the American League and everyone in the National League, separate pages, um, sorted by OPS plus, and I want to okay. see what names appear here near the top of the list that did not win the Silver Slugger, and we can look at their position. Sure. So at the American League, um, the top four is Trout, Cruz, Bergman, Springer. All of them won their Silver Sluggers, but the next two names are Austin Meadows and Yohan Mankata. Um, who finished five and six respectively, a 143 OPS plus and a 141 respectively. Neither of them won Silver Slugger. Austin Meadows being an outfielder, Yohan Mankata being um, he played second base this year, right? I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Position. Oh no, five. He played third base this year. Okay. Oh okay. Yeah, I didn't know that either. So we're thank you for believing in me. <laughs> uh, it so, sounded right, man. It really did. So what was in front of? No. Huh? <laughs> What'd you say? I just kept interrupting you. It's what he was as a prospect, and that's what I thought of. But go ahead. So obviously, um Mankata got uh log jammed here by Bregman because they played the same position. Bregman finished with a higher OPS plus, so that makes sense that Bregman would win it. But Yoan Man- or, um, Austin Meadows uh finished with a higher who won the uh the third outfield award? It was Trout, uh, Trout, Springer, and Betts. He finished with a higher OPS yeah. plus than Mookie Betts. So he was hurt how would for you a lot of the season? I kind of get it. Like he didn't. I only let me look it up just so I'm not talking out my ass. Uh, but he was hurt for a sizable chunk of the season. And, no, he was. You're right. Um, uh, oh, oh, Corbin. He played 138 games. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of games. That's uh, that's also more 500. Than 530 at bats. Uh man. Okay. That's kind of something right there. All right, I got nothing. You kind of should have won it. More more so is let's say you don't want to give it to Meadows. I hate the Rays. He didn't play quite enough games. Whatever tickles your fancy. Um, there is also another outfielder that finished ahead of Mookie Betts in OPS plus that did not win this award. And he led in one of the most fun categories, home runs. Jorge Soler. I just think he had too quiet of a season. Like he led the league in home, runs, but nobody really knew he was doing it until the very end. Like honestly, um, I glossed over him for most of the season. You know, I think I most people have. did until until he like finished with the most home runs in the American League. But at the same time, right. this voting doesn't take place until the season ends. So. Yeah, I I wish he won, not even as like a Red Sox hater, but because the Red Sox did get other representation via v- vis-a-vis um, Xander Bogarts. So it would have been kind of cool to see the Royals have a guy with Soler who set the franchise record in home runs this year, which he, is he, crazy. Yeah, he dethroned George Brett. I mean, <laughs> that's that's nuts. Like, that's that's a big deal for baseball and for Kansas City. Hopefully, uh, hopefully the Royals actually pay this guy a ton of money when they sign him to an extension, uh, which must it. be coming soon because this yeah. was his sixth year in baseball, which is how long team control lasts for. So I'm expecting he must be a free agent. Like he has to be. I'll look at that later. I don't want to. I don't want to drag this down. Uh, I got it right here. 
Um, yeah, he's a he has one more season left. Okay, for twenty twenty. Then he must have signed an extension with the a small extension with the um with the Royals at some point. Mm-hmm. Wow, what a what a nice turnaround he had. His first season with the Royals, um, he. Oh, he only played in 35 games. That's why. I was going to say he has a 144 batting average and a 35 OPS plus. Oof. He added, he added over 100 points onto his OPS plus in two years. That's pretty good. That's really fucking cool. Um, JD Martinez is on this list as high OPS pluses without a silver slugger, but he got logged in by, by Nelson Cruz. Um, Marcus Simeon didn't win, but that's because. No, he. Uh, because Xander Bogarts did, who did finish ahead of him. Everything looks kind of kind of normal, actually. Matt Olson did not win Silver Slugger, though he did finish with a higher OPS plus than Carlos Santana, but it's pretty marginal. It's 137 versus 136, so I don't think it matters. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's a major deal. All right. I'm uh, I'm willing to declare American League as as discussed. A quick quick peak at the national league that's, peak. that's a me level fuck up yeah what can i say i'm a special guy uh there's actually a lot here uh, a lot more than there was in the american league to look at so the top finishers were christian yellich cody bellinger anthony rendon but then it was Cattell Marte, uh, hmm. um who i think spent most of his time in at second this year or no scratch that he spent most of his time in uh center field this year see now i'm glad i didn't uh didn't commit to you this time because you fucked me last time i i i fuck you a lot um <laughs> who would you rather what would you think of if Cattell Marte won this award instead of um ozzy albies or not ozzy albies the other one um ronald acuna jr for reference um, Ketel Marte, a 149 OPS plus. Ronald Acuna Jr., a 122. Ketel Marte, eh. fourth place in OPS plus. Or Ronald Acuna Jr., 22nd. I can't say I would complain. I don't know. I mean, it's not too much of a difference where I'd be upset by it. I guess I'm not just a huge uh, Ronald a, Acuna fan. I, 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 it's a pretty big difference. I, I'm now a little bit upset that Ketel Marte didn't because the Braves already got represented via vis-a-vis Ozzy Albies. Yeah, right. Fuck it. Fuck you, Ronald Can you? Fuck you, Ronald Cunha Jr. Uh, Pete Alonso did not win it for first base, even though he finished with the highest OPS plus for all first basemen. Not only that, but second place didn't fin- didn't win the award either, Josh Bell. Um, third place for a first baseman didn't win it either for Anthony Rizzo. Uh, it went to fourth place finish, Freddie Freeman. Yeah, that's. I don't get that. That's actually really surprising. Yeah, especially because the Braves had two other dudes who won it. Um, so, fuck you, Freddie Freeman. Yeah, fuck you, Freddie Freeman. Uh, Jeff McNeil didn't win it. Granted, this one might be a little bit tougher because he doesn't have a position. He yeah. plays. He plays baseball. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so a, I kind of get that one. Uh, Juan Soto didn't win it even though we had a top 10 uh, OPS plus in all of the national league. Although yeah, again, Ronald Acuna jr. It feels like such an outlier. This is 22nd place OPS plus. It's probably those stolen bases. They probably do consider that. They definitely do. Cause it's flashy. Uh, yeah, they, but there's just so many great other contestants. You're like a U a Eugenio Suarez. Um, who else is a, is an outfielder here? Um. Oh damn it, Brian Reynolds. Who the fuck are you? No, hey, Pittsburgh Pirate. Hey, hey, Brian Reynolds. Brian Reynolds had he a had higher a OPS plus, higher OPS plus than than, than Ronald Cunha Jr. All right, I'm and gonna look, list. I'm just gonna look at every... that batting average. That's yeah, well, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. That what's what is it? I can't see it. Three eighty seven, three fourteen. There we go. Uh, here's every outfielder with a higher OPS plus than Ronald Cunha Jr. Christian Yelich, Cody Bellinger, Cattell Marte, technically Jeff McNeil did spend most of his uh, plate appearances in the outfield or as an outfielder. Juan Soto, um, Brian Reynolds, Michael Conforto, Jock Peterson, Bryce Harper, and Charlie Blackman. All outfielders 
all sorry, all players who spent the majority of their playing time this season in the outfield that finished with a higher OPS plus than Ronald Acuna Jr. Super so weird. He won weak. This award. So weak. Fucking tighten that shit up. <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> Uh, I I got nothing else. Uh, I got one more thing, just because we were talking about stolen bases so much. Who led all of MLB in stolen bases this year? Was it not Ronald Acuna Jr.? It was not. Really? Who stole more bases yeah. than? Someone had right, nine wait, 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 more tell... stolen bases than Ronald Acuna. Oh man, I feel it. I really feel like I should know that. Uh, what league? Oh man, uh, American. Oh my god, I'm Where actually did... not confident with that answer. All right, which means know. it's a team we don't talk about a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a team we don't talk about ever. It is American. I have uh, really second guessed myself. Oh shit, who the fuck is this? Uh, All right, I'll give you like what, two what guesses. Did... Give me, maybe? give me a division. Give me a division. Uh, West. All right, the AL West. Is it Malik Smith? It is Malik Smith. Yes. All right. It only took two qualifiers for me to get there, but all right. Um, I want He's... you to guess what his war is with league leading 46 stolen bases. All right. Well, he's not a great hitter. <laughs> and uh he only got he only got to steal bases because the manners are bad and they want to give the fans something. And his defense is pretty mediocre. Uh, all right, Corbin, let me ask you one question. Is <laughs> is it positive? <laughs> it is not. Is it negative 0.3? <laughs> it is negative 0.1. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> By all definitions, he is worse than replacement level. Which is nuts. <laughs> <laughs> 46 stolen bases, and you are so bad at everything else. A replacement is better than you. Yeah, well, that's why the Rays shipped him the fuck out of there, man. They knew it. <laughs> this diet Tony Kemp ass motherfucker. <laughs> All right, you want to talk about our uh, our NFL bold predictions a little bit? See how we're doing halfway through? Um, As much as I would love to, we are like an hour and 15 minutes into this episode. So do you want oh, to save this are. for another episode? <laughs> Yeah, I guess we should. Um, I mean, we can record on Sunday and just put it out whenever. Uh, yeah, we can figure it out. Uh, I guess we should probably wait until after. Just record regular time Tuesday. That way we could at least get this week's stuff in. True. We can do that. All right. All right, then we'll get out of here. Yeah? I What? You cut out there. Oh. It doesn't matter. If you want to <laughs> follow the show on Twitter, you can do so at Juicing Pod. If you want to hit us up via email, you can do so at juicingthenumbers at gmail.com. And if you want to find show notes, you can do so at juicingthenumbers.wixsite.com slash website or juicingthenumbers.com. And until Thursday, y'all have a good one. Bye.